majesty of this day that the Lord has. Good evening, everybody. Reverend Doctor. This day that the Lord has. Good evening, everybody. Reverend Doctor. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Matters of Faith, the radio show. Matters of Faith is a show designed to bring issues of interest to you, the listening audience, that will challenge, encourage, motivate, and inspire you to keep the faith. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. J. Ron Russell, and it's my job to engage you in stimulating dialogue, dialogue that's inspiring, encouraging, motivating, dialogue and conversations that will help you build your determination, your commitment, and your character, conversations that will help you keep the faith. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. First John 5 and 4. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, without further ado, it is time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. Good evening, everybody. Today is Monday, December 26th. It is 8 o'clock. It is time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. J. Lane Russell. And tonight, we're going to be discussing the article and the thought. Today, the Lord has made. Today, the Lord has made. And my very special guest this evening, Reverend Bernard F. Johnson III. Call the phone and tell us.
And now it gives me a great deal of pleasure. I want to introduce to you tonight my guest. Now, he's a very special guy, so I want to take the moment, take the time to introduce him properly. Amen, my brother. How are you? Good. How are you? God Good. bless I'm you. I'm bring myself on screen. I realize that uh, they didn't see much of anything on my screen, so I'm just going to share it just so that they can see and that you can see what they were looking at. I hope they heard what I was saying, but I'm going to I'm going to show this just so that they'll know that I really had you on the screen and I was talking about you, and they didn't hear it because I think I missed a couple of 
commands, but nevertheless, you heard what I said, right? <laughs> so, so I introduced you and, and I'm just going to let people look and see that you are here with us tonight. This is my guest, everybody. This is Reverend Bernard uh, F. Johnson the third, not junior. He's the third. And so uh, listen, the, I, I read the bio, but I'm going to probably do it again. But just do me a favor, if you don't mind. Uh, I Since I read the bio, I hope they heard it. And if they didn't hear it, why don't you tell us something about you that we don't know and we really should know? Well, um, again, I thank, I thank God so much for the opportunity. Uh, but something that stands out to me um, that uh, people may not know um, that I would like for them to know is that the significance of one's life is paramount when it comes to glorifying and serving uh, serving God. And I know and have known for a long time, even from a very young age, uh, that God had called me prophetically to ministry in such a way that it behooved me at a young age because I didn't know how to really explain it or what to say to people about it. As God's hand has been upon me and as God has guided me and led me uh, from a child, and I didn't realize its full potential and the importance of it, uh, my brother, until uh, I finally yielded to the Lord and gave my life to him. And so I wanted people to know uh, that there are so many uh, young people, I'm not unique in my own self as it relates to the Lord. There are so many of us who God has shown up early in their lives and may have been embarrassed or maybe not understand or be willing to share with people this great thing that God had planted in their lives from a young age and to wait to see how much you have to go through and went through mm. to finally realize that God has called you into ministry. Mm. That's interesting. So your, your significant uh, 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 call into ministry happened when you were young, but more than the significant call, was the realization that you were being called at an early age and then trying to figure out how you're going to deal with this call in your life that was so overwhelming that you kind of tried to run from it. I know. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I know. How long did you get? How far did you get? And how long did you run? Uh, I ran from, uh, actually, <laughs> I know we may not have time in the segment, but it was just so amazing to me and so prolific uh, in, in a, such a way that I can all, all but almost envision it even now, but it was from the age of eight or nine years old, um, and then to uh, be raised uh, with a, a grandmother and parents that were so rooted and grounded in their faith, family coming from deep South, South Carolina, and um, just to be in that atmosphere of the anointing of a, a wonderful woman of God and my grandmother. Um, uh, from the age of eight, and I, I didn't stop running to almost age 34. And um, it, it's just amazing in how God allowed me to run as like one who is an expert fisher as he casts into the sea and uh, I'm waiting for a bite or, or a soul that will, that will love him and to serve him. And when I bit, it's like when uh, uh, a fish bites and, and, and the, and the professional fisher uh, takes the line off and allows the fish to go until he gets tired. Mm. And then when he gets tired, it is that he locks it and then he slowly reels him in. Uh, and, and, you know, the fisherman aspect of the calling in ministry, um, truly I can attribute myself and my calling to that type of example mm. and scenario. Uh, I was caught by an expert fisher, fisherman. And so he allowed me to run my course. Uh, but when it came to me, it was so prolifically uh, believable uh, that uh, the only thing that I could do at the time is say yes. Mm. That's interesting. I, I, I kind of can identify with that. And I guess you're right, because I've had uh, over the years I've been doing this, I've had a number of ministers come on, uh, probably more than I can count for sure. And I get every one of them had a story that sounded similar to what you just said, including your story. Yes, including amen. yours truly, because <laughs> it's not unusual for us to be called at an age that is young and not knowing what to do with that calling and running from it because it's scary. And then growing up, you know, you you kind of have these 
these what I call the the riverbanks that that it seemed like you know you you kind of want to get out of the water just to just so you can wander around but yes. you can't seem to get out of the riverbanks and keep he keeps kind of knocking you in the field of plan so finally you say okay Lord I just you know I'm done I'm done just just do with me whatever you want I, I'm done and then yes. and then we we we're, we're led in that way. That's interesting. What part of South Carolina, by the way, did your parents, your grandparents hail from? Uh, my grandparents uh, come from the area of Camden, South Carolina, uh, ah. and, and and that in fact the area um, where I currently live, um, uh, an African American community in the midst of a middle class upper middle class uh, white suburbia, um, the African American families that are that that are here were families uh, a group of five to seven families that all came up to New Jersey mm. and at the same time and they uh, began to have families all of them had big families five to seven families and actually populated this area so much so that the churches the ministers and even to this day uh, the remnant of those families are still strong and notable um, and noteworthy here in this very area. And so um, my grandmother always told me, uh, she said uh, that, uh, you know, she, she wouldn't preach to you. She wouldn't sit you down and give you a long dialogue about God or the word of God. She was a show me or watch me type of person. She lived that, that profession uh, mm. of faith in God so much so you could see it in her. It was a living life story uh, right before my eyes. And she was rough, uh, mm. but she was very firm and, 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 and highly, highly anointed, uh, so much so that I, I really never heard anyone say anything about her uh, at any time other than she is a wonderful woman mm. and a God-fearing woman. And so growing up in that atmosphere as our parents worked all day. My grandmother lived across the street. Hmm. She was a small woman. She wasn't hmm. but about five foot one, maybe 80, <laughs> 85 pounds. But wow. boy, she had a big heart for God. So I was, in fact, my, my initial encounter with God, as I shared earlier, my brother actually was when my parents were going on a cruise, when the cruise liners would go out of New York. And this particular year, uh, my parents uh, didn't take me. And I was highly upset with them. So much so I ranted and raved and I said some things. And, and this, is, this, this is very important to what you asked me earlier because that same night I had to go across the street to my, my grandmother's home and stay with her for the 10 days my parents were away. It was in that house uh, uh, upstairs in the upper room mm. <laughs> on the mm. second floor. Um, um, uh, because on the first floor I was struggling, but once I got it together and calmed down. The Lord allowed me to go to the second floor and to uh, lay in the bed and go to sleep. It was then I had that encounter, my first encounter mm. uh, with the Lord in that house. And, and find it not odd that in that very house, one of the most prominent African-American churches in this section of New Jersey uh, uh -huh. started in that very home that my grandmother and my granddad owned and I had that vision and that encounter in that house. Uh, really? Out of that house, church. Out of that house came a church ministry, and that mm. church ministry branched off to some powerful, mighty men of God preachers. As I saw that you are, are a druid, Amen. That you uh, went to Drew uh, Theological. A good friend of mine who just passed, Dr. Keith Owens. Uh, he, uh, I grew up with him. Uh, he was a pastor of Salem Baptist Church in Jersey City. Mm. Uh, for almost 30 years. Uh, Bishop Donald Hilliard at the Cathedral International in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. Uh, Dr. Bernadette Glover Williams. Uh, um, just a host of prolific and powerful, uh, nationally known and noteworthy preachers uh, with a very mm. similar background and calling. And mm. so out of that house and, and that I grew up in, uh, being raised by my grandmother when my parents were away and at work, all of these things happen. There's always something unique and just, uh, I just would say divine what happened to me in that house. Mm. And so here I am, uh, my brother, uh, like yourself, a yoke man of the gospel, uh, just ready and willing to serve God. Wow.
that that is good. See, I when I ask when I ask the question, you know, tell me something about yourself that that we don't know that we should know. That's the awesome story because that gives us that gives us an opportunity to to really just look at our own lives and see where God is guiding us and taking us to. And it's interesting because on today we're talking about uh, the topic of the conversation, obviously from the article that I wrote, uh, the day the Lord has made. Yes, and we get that because yesterday was Christmas, and we celebrated the greatest day in Christendom. I, I guess there's three great days in Christendom that we celebrate. One is Christmas, the the birth and the coming of Christ. The other is the crucifixion, and then of course the resurrection, and then yes. ultimately the ascension, and then his return. So there are five days in Christianity that we really look to. But yesterday, if there was no yesterday, there would be no today. And if there was That's no right. yesterday, there'd be no tomorrow. And if there was no yesterday, there'd be no future. <laughs> so yesterday right. was like critically important to everything. And so what you're saying is that even, even in our lives and our going through and our living our lives, that the Lord is there sort of, you know, divinely making things happen in the midst of what we call time. That's he's right. making it happen. And so we don't always understand it, but he's always working in the proper time. That's right. I, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited. And thank you for sharing that with me. Truly, Tru yes. I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, so, so tell me, when you read that article, and I know you did because I sent it to you, and I read it also so you could hear it while I was on the air, but what did you think about when, when you heard that article and I was talking about the various aspects of, of, of Christmas and that this is the day the Lord has made, what, what, what came to your mind? What were you looking at? Well, um, from... Uh, I, I tried, my brother, to not be so uh, predictable in my responses in any form, um, uh, uh, because I'm always willing, and I've learned, I say that again, I've learned uh, mm -hmm. to uh, not to think too much or to overthink a thought uh, without including the Lord, the move of the Spirit and what the Spirit is revealing to me right. in, in, that, in that way. Um, we we all can gain even from uh, uh, podcast uh, in in this manner to be able to uh, share and to give our insights from uh, a, a diverse uh, with a diverse perspective that would give us a better all around understanding mm -hmm. and meaning of of the whole. But the upon reading the article was amazing because I preached yesterday um, from. Uh, that very passage mm. and to and to see what you have written it it is amazing to me first i would like to say it's amazing to me and i thank you my brother for allowing the lord to use you in such a way that you are not ashamed of the gospel nor of our savior but you're willing to uh not water down nor to doctor uh or to uh meddle with uh the true sincerity um and and pureness of the word. And this is what the Lord shared with us, that as preachers and, and pastors, that God has called us um, to, uh, to keep the pureness, uh, similar to the apostles doctrine, the pureness of the word and to share it boldly. Uh, uh, because today is not popular to share the true word of God. Right. Uh, today, right. today, today it is even with your article, which was, was awesome is that in today's society, the church has fallen prey uh, to a carnivorous and, and, and violent uh, enemy. Mm. Um, we have allowed even mm. for the enemy to infiltrate into um, um, the church meeting and, and celebratory times during the year, of course, as you have shared uh, so much in so, much, so many ways that oftentimes it's just, um, amazing of how we can really say uh, what is it that uh, we really are worshiping and praising God with a pure heart and clear conscience and, and a way that is pleasing to God according to the scripture sometimes it's hard to even see even in the church mm. um, but I do realize that commercialization along with the with the uh, the myth um, of uh, winter solace and and cinder Claus and Saint Nick and how um, they, they pushed the 25th as the birth date of Christ and how they uh, uh, symbolize and try to mingle together uh, with some type of 
uh, reasonable uh, uh, sanity and understanding of Santa Claus and, and Christ, where mm. he, he, they say the song says, uh, he knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Goodness and so it right. gives us an insert of something that sounds godly, but yet it is worldly. And it, and it, and it, gives, it gives a caveat as to where it's, okay, that can be acceptable even to those of us who know better. Mm. And so uh, um, I, I'm, I'm just buffooned when it comes to um, how um, the enemy has infiltrated and mingled uh, every holy holiday with some type of pagan celebration. Mm. And, and, and we, even the church, even the church that uh, um, many of our churches, we have the decorations of the Casey of old. And we know Jeremiah, what he says about hacking the tree and, and cutting it and carving it and forming it and trimming it. And, and, and then once it gets old, we don't even realize it's going to burn us up in the house if we ain't careful. Uh, but yet uh, we spend all this time in, in things that are uh, not even uh, in the same in the same uh, dimension as uh, worshiping uh, the God that we serve. Mm. And so for you to share what you did for me, it was enlightening in so many ways because I don't know it all. And mm. I'm excited about hearing uh, what others have to say because if we're willing to use two ears and, 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 and be careful to when we use this one mouth, uh, we can uh, uh, gain uh, a, a wealth of information, knowledge, and insight from one another, as the Lord says, so that we are better for the coming. And so, um, again, um, I'm just thankful for what you shared. And if there's anything in particular, because it was so much that, you know, I have so many notes on what you had wrote that sometimes I don't know where to begin in reference to dialogue. Um, but again, um, your uh, article was wonderful because this is the day that the Lord has made. That's where we start. And, yeah. and every day, yeah. every day is the Lord's day. And he says, he says, rejoice. And because he's not asking, us. He, he said, this should be an automatic a thing for all of us. Rejoice and be glad because we've been created to worship. Him. We've been created to glorify him. We, none of us have been created for ourselves. Uh, we've been saved and bought with a price. And so I'm thankful uh, that uh, God gives us the opportunity to rejoice and be glad because we can celebrate uh, Christ coming into the world at any time. During the day. Mm. Uh, we, we can also prepare our hearts, our minds, uh, um, uh, our soul, our spirit in a sense of Advent uh, four weeks prior to a date, any time of year. And it should be symbolic and, meaning, and the meaning should be the same. And so again, um, it's just that with the commercialization and the carnally minded uh, uh, um, uh, members of the body of Christ, is re they're, they're really adding a uh, fuel to already a burning fire. Well, let me, let me share this with you and then you, you can make a comment on this as well. We were on, my wife and I were on the train. We were going to see a play the other day, The Death of a Salesman, which was a great, play by the way if you haven't had a chance to see it go see this awesome movie awesome, awesome play but we were on our way we were on a subway train and the sister came on and she was on a she was with a walker and happened to be a sister um and she was she was sharing some of the gospel and and she was giving things and she was receiving things and then someone said well merry christmas to you my sister and our comment was i don't celebrate pagan pagan uh, 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 observances, and she just got off the train at that point. So my wife leaned over to me and said, "What's pagan about Christmas?" So, wow. yeah, you you just started that. So I'm gonna let you kind of jump on right back into it because you started. I said, "Okay, I like that." What what's pagan? What 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 have we done with this day of observance? Whether it's the 25th of December or the 25th of June, or maybe I don't care what day it is, because it's not a question of whether or not it's on a date. The question is whether or not he came. Did he come? But the answer to that question is yes. History dictates that he came. And of course, the gospels and the writers of the biblical 
uh, uh, and the biblical Lord tells us that he came. So we know that. I don't care what day it is. It's, just, it's symbolic of his coming. So what would you have said to my wife had she said to you, what is pagan about Christmas? What is pagan about Christmas? Wow. It's amazing because you, you, in order to uh, attempt to define or describe a thing, uh, there has to be a root. Uh, there has to be a beginning of it. And we know that uh, Christ coming into the world was not his beginning. It mm -hmm. was just a, a God's way of introducing himself um, um, uh, in an immaculate way, uh, in a divine way, in a holy way, into a sinful world. Um, and by him coming into the world, uh, people say, well, Christ was born. No, he was not physically born on that day. He, he came into the world that day, uh, wrapped divinity wrapped in humanity. We, we do mm -hmm. know that. Uh, so that is, that is not of a truth, that is the truth. Uh, and so for me, uh, what plagiarizes the day um, begins with the root of it. And we know we all have a common enemy and we know the expense that the enemy uh, was willing to go through to make sure or to ensure uh, Messiah not coming into the world. And so uh, because he was not able, and I can really go into that because there is a great story behind that, uh, but uh, by him coming into the world was God's way of a sure uh, uh, victory, uh, even before the vindication, uh, because coming in, he had to come into the world uh, in order to go to the cross. And so uh, the paganistic mindset of what's uh, so pagan about uh, Christmas, well, first of all, if we do some uh, word study and some, uh, and some research, uh, it's not hard to find. It, it is right in plain view, but it is masqueraded by those who are not truly uh, um, um, focused and a part of the body of Christ as, as it relates to the anointing, because those of us who know God knows uh, know and will be able to identify what is so paganistic about it. But if we can go to and start off from a root perspective, uh, we look at the Western world, the Western world, um, uh, celebrated uh, during this time that we call um, Christmas and the birth of Christ as a part of winter solace. Uh, it was a high time celebration uh, of the, the longest dark day and the, and the shortest day of light. And I have an issue with that just alone uh, because the longest dark day uh, uh, needs not to be uh, specified in any way because the, the baby Christ coming into the world is the light. He was called the light of the world uh, coming into a dark place. And so we look at winter solace. Winter solace was a Eurocentric perspective and outlook on um, celebration and festival um, during this time of year. Uh, it was then, you, you, you can go further to St. Nicholas. He was uh, of the Catholic uh, church and denomination where he was a patron saint that was said to be benevolent uh, to so many. Uh, and, so, and, and he uh, gained so much fame uh, due to his benevolence, which seemed to be a part of what we're about uh, uh, as it relates to the church. We are to be benevolent. We are to be uh, willing to feed the, um, the homeless and, and clothe them as the naked as well. And um, it, it got so gained so much popularity that St. Nick, through, through uh, Catholicism actually grew. And as we know, as Catholicism grew, so did its paganistic outlook uh, because it came from the Roman Catholic Church. It came from Rome. And if you do your research on Rome and, and, and how Rome became the seat of religion, uh, as some would say, uh, with the Holy Father, uh, with the uh, idolatrous uh, um, um, Things that we, you would find within the um, in the churches, uh, the Virgin Mary, all of this, all of these paganistic um, statues and all of these things. But to get to to what you said, um, let, let me just say this because there's so much that I could say, but, but I'm 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 being led by God to say exactly what.
God would have me to say without cutting corners mm -hmm. uh, and taking up a lot of dialogue time uh, because uh, it, it is through the Roman Catholic Church uh, that uh, those countries in Europe, uh, Norway, Sweden, uh, they came up with this fictional uh, character called Cinder Claus. Uh, Cinder Claus uh, um, somehow uh, in, mingled with uh, Saint Nick, uh, and Saint Nick uh, uh, became uh, Cinder Claus. Cinder Claus became Saint Nick, uh, and that's what they would call Santa Claus. Uh, and how he came into just like an Easter when Easter comes in. Uh, when we talk about the passion of, of Christ, we talk about this Easter bunny. If you look at what Easter bunny means, uh, if you do the history behind it, it is the enemy's way of counteracting uh, the greatness and the awesome splendor of our God. And it just did nothing more than to grow. With that same Eurocentric perspective, it moved to the Americas uh, when uh, the settlers came to America because they came, many of them came from Europe. And that winter solace mindset and the Roman Catholic way of Centuria, uh, it was a festival where they would have orgies and all of these things. This was all intermingled. Uh, this was well known in Europe uh, and so much so that it intermingled with the trueness of the word of God and the highness and the highlight of the birth of Christ to, to attempt to uh, um, veil the view and to really uh, adhere to uh, what God um, desired to do um, for all of us, which was immaculate, which was divine. And so coming to the new world, they brought these same things, these same beliefs, these paganistic, the Yule law, the mistletoe, um, um, all of these things. And, it, and it's like even today, when you hear music, my brother, it's like you could hear something like, uh, come behold him, pa rum -pa bum bum uh, Come see the newborn king, Parumpa Bum Bum. Then the next song you hear, I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus underneath the Christmas tree. And then you hear Nat King Cole. The mistletoe, sing. underneath the mistletoe. Watch, yeah. last time. watch this. <laughs> then you hear, then you hear Matt, Nat King Cole. If I could I speak a few languages, but you can hear Nat King Cole. He'll come in and just wow you with old Tynenbaum. Mm -hmm. These toys and I neglected. Zul broomstick nul, Zul ventizide, eyes vine and hinder, McVinish night. So when you hear that, and then the next thing you hear, you hear something uh, contrary to all that again. So it, it was always uh, through commercialization, through the root of uh, basically coming from a, a Eurocentric perspective, along with the enemy uh, masterfully um, um, infiltrating and with the mindset of taking away the true meaning of mm -hmm. Christmas, so much so he has even the very elect of God. Uh, practicing, and we know it's wrong, practicing the Christmas tree and, 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 and Santa Claus and, and all of these things. So, I mean, it's, it's really a strategy. It's a methodology. It's a plan. It's a scheme um, um, of the and schism of the enemy. And he's very good at doing it, and he's been doing a great job. So my thing is, in what you're asking, when is the church really going to separate itself from something we never needed to be attached to yeah that's the question that's the question and i thank you for elucidating and giving us a really clear picture of where that comes from and also the connections to the eurocentric uh perspective of things i, I love the way you shared with us the 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 i you know the, the santa claus and and santia as well as the mingling with saint nicholas who was in fact a patron saint for the catholic church but became more of a fictitious character and, yes. and, and, and used all of those intermingled together to kind of water down the whole Christology of what we call the celebration of the arrival, the advent of the Christ into the world. But it's interesting because some of those things, even, in, and I, I put this in the articles specifically because I really wanted to, 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 to take one of those pagan um, uh, sort of uh, 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 models, the Christmas tree, the evergreen tree. Yes. Look at it from a different perspective, because you know what? Um, depending upon how you look at things, that de that determines their 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 reality. And so, looking at the Christmas tree, 
the evergreen tree, which has a point, which points to heaven. The, the, the evergreen, the, the forever greenness of the tree, yes, the everlasting yes. life of God, right? And then the presents that go under the tree, the gift that God has given to us, the Christmas tree in its, in its pagan uh, kind of origin actually has a spiritual connection to it when you look at it in the right way. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And then the I, I gifts like that. that we give are, are, are essentially what, they, what the gifts are are so like the, the three kings coming to see the baby yes. Jesus and just say to them, you know, we bring the very best that we have, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We give the best that we have because the Lord has given to us the very best that he has. And because of that, we have an opportunity to have everlasting life without that birth, without that, without that immaculate conception, because the birth itself was miraculous, but the Absolutely. conception was even more. You know the conception that that this that this woman, this child, this girl, this teenager named Mary would actually give birth to a child without having inter without have ever having any interaction with a man at all, and she was going to give birth to a child, and that child that 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 gift that bundle of joy was going to be the best and most significant gift ever given to the world. Period. In the story. <laughs> That's, that's all right. I got. <laughs> that's it. So I thank you for really sharing that because that that's important to to understand that. And I, I got some comments. You know, one, one of our one of our, re, our viewers says, "Great conversation. You're really breaking it down. Thanks for that." And that's to you. That comment is to you because you broke it down. So thank you. Can, keep talking because I want you to be my expert tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, well, I like I like what you said uh, because when you think about the Christmas tree. Uh, there, uh, actually, you're right, and, and I'm glad you mentioned because nothing's wrong with the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just that God says the pagan nations. Uh, right. um, this is what they do. Uh, but what I like I like your breakdown on the evergreen or forever green because mm -hmm. when you look at the evergreen, its branches face upward. Yep. They're not sideways or down; they face upward. And no matter what the season. Uh, uh, is still green, yeah. And, and I like the, the 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 example of it because it's no matter what the season, because we know there's a time and season for all things under heaven. Uh, but what I like about it even more, it gives as Solomon in all his wise candor, uh, he says uh, there's a time for all of these things, okay. And 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 all of these things happen uh, after birth and before death. And so we can, we will experience a lot of things in the seasons. But what I like about the Christmas tree is that it reminds me to keep it green, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what the season. Uh, and, and also, I like what you mentioned about Magi, because Magi brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it was symbolic uh, and connective uh, to uh, the life that this child would live mm -hmm. and to identify him with surety to those who uh, prophesied about him that people will realize this is uh, the Christ child. And so I'm just uh, excited about just uh, everything that you've, that you've mentioned, everything that you've said um, with the evergreen tree, uh, with the gifts underneath, because let's face it, uh, I know, I don't know if it's Hallmark or one of them said, we are the gift. That keeps on giving. Well, well, you know what? No, there's no gift uh, that that in this world that keeps on giving. Uh, it's nothing about giving in this world, nor in its system. Uh, but we can say, as children and believers of Christ, um, that He is the gift that keeps on giving. And with that mindset, uh, it causes one to say, just like you opened up in your article, "This is the day that the Lord has made." The mind focus is on the Lord. Uh, uh, not only this day. But it says it every day because God never ceases to be who we who he always was, is and will always be. Mm -hmm. And so everything um, uh, points directly to him. And it's amazing of how the immaculate conception was like the angel did say, is anything too hard for God? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and even many of us in Christendom struggle with the virgin birth. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you'd be surprised what people really believe and don't believe but call themselves Christians. And so that's why, for me, to be able to slowly 
uh, feed uh, the people of God, uh, a study diet of the word of God with uh, relevant and real examples, tangible for us to realize, touch, and to be able to identify. It, it does so much to our overall faith because a lot of times we just look at scripture and look at it, well, that's what it is. But what does it say today? It says the same thing. Uh, but again, uh, Christ has already come into the world, my brother. We know that. Uh, and so we, we commemorate and celebrate his birth, but we do know uh, we still commemorate and celebrate uh, uh, be and prepare because you know what? He's coming back. And so uh, it, it is amazing of how you said, because one of my mentors used to always say, this is the day, Reverend Glenn Earl Richardson. He used to always say, this is the day that the Lord has made everywhere he would go. Uh, and, and he said, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so every day is a new birth because he, because he was born into the world. It allowed us the opportunity to be born again. Uh, and so uh, look, 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 when you look back uh, over your life, anything that we look back over, we have to come right back to he came into the world. Uh, uh, and he came to seek and save those who are lost. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And yes, all of this came and could not happen unless he would have come into the world. And so uh, the angels did say and saying, you know, the songs we, we sing joy to the world for the Lord has come, you know, uh, peace and goodwill towards all men on earth. You know, it's, it's just amazing how a choir came down and sang uh, because the heavenly hosts still were in awe because they did not know the fullness of God's plan of redemption. Yet God used them to participate, amen, in it. And so the Bible says they stood around the balconies of heaven in awe, in splendor, and what looked over and saw what God was doing as God wrapped himself into humanity. And they uh, were actually able to see his divinity and to watch him uh, just uh, wondrously, masterfully, divinely uh, place himself, speak himself into existence as he stepped down through 40 and two generations, as he transcended eternity and time, uh, and, and then took of himself no reputation because he already knew who he was. Mm -hmm. And to go through all of this uh, and then appear, and he was the very hands that caught himself. Uh, because all the hands, uh, uh, they were hands contrary to the hands of God uh, that, that desired to bring him forth uh, from the womb. Uh, because Herod and the whole crew uh, of, of, um, of demons and, and, and principalities of wickedness and, and high places, their hands were there too. But God's divineness, God's awesomeness, God's um, um, uh, um, omnipresence and, uh, and omnipotence and omniscience. And all that God is, God made sure that this would happen. And God made sure, he said, when I send my word, because the child was sent, the child was the word of God that That's became right. flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And we could not be, we could not behold God's glory in any way, form or fashion, unless it'd been through this child, this very child. None of this redemption, salvation, reconciliation, uh, propitiation, none of the sanctification, none of the righteousness or justice would even come into play unless he had came into the world. And because he came into the world, he came in, my brother, as you know, as a child, God came in in a most, uh, just amazing, the most uh, uh, simple and humiliating and humble way, came in as a child, a child born into the world, like all should have, have need of parents. Uh, uh, he showed he had need because he had earthly parents as well. Um, and not only that, his parents were told who he would be. And look at God. Look at how he moved and everything that he uh, designed and everything he planned. It was a perfect plan. And actually, it, it was a, 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 it was a, it was, what do they call it? It was a fix. It was a fix that was on. Uh, wasn't that Vegas or Atlantic City? It was a fix from the beginning because God already had fix. And so coming into the world, uh, just it was joyous and victorious for us because of our condition that we have gotten in ourselves in the condition that we could not get ourselves out of. We got ourselves in debt. We got ourselves into hawk. We got ourselves into a separation spiritually from our creator as we are made in his image and according to his likeness. 
And it was always God's will to, and always through the Bible to reconcile man back to himself because that was the will of God always concerning us. You know, what's interesting. You said a couple of things and you said a lot, but I, I really appreciate that. But you said a couple of things that really stuck out to me. One of them, I, I, I drew a comparison in my mind uh, when you talked about the baby Jesus coming into the world and needed to be cared for by parents because he was he was born like we were, went through the same same channels that we went through in order to come forth. The interesting thing is that I think about the first person that was that was given tithes by Abraham, Jesus. We don't know anything about him, his beginning nor his end. We just know he showed up, but he was an adult. That's right. And he was he was he was deemed to be worthy to be given this blessing to bring tithes and offerings to christ was born as a child that's right and yet the magi the wise men knew that this child was worthy to be gifted the very best that they had like yes. abraham bought the gold and the silver and, and all of the other riches these magi these wise men came and they brought the best that the world had to offer. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The best that they had to offer. And, and so it tells us that, 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 that we need to make sure that, and you mentioned this word, that the, the, the gospel that we preach and the lessons that we teach must be relative. They must make sense to the common person today so that they can understand and they can actually differentiate between the paganism of things and the glorified God who is. And if we can do that, then we can help them to understand that, that we, this child who came into the world was the one that was prophesied about, the one that was fulfilled every prophetic word that there was about the Messiah coming into the world. That's right. And that it was because of his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his ultimate return, that we have the opportunity to be in, to, to have everlasting, this glorified life that we have. Now, one of my, I just want to let that rest for a moment, but I want to share with you one of my viewers. He said, um, I like your uh, reaction comment to his answer about the pagan ideas of, Chris, of Christmas. Your perspective brings us back to finding something higher for those who love the Lord and a call to his purpose. The tree pointing to heaven, the green prosperity in our hearts, bringing about a joy to many at this time of year. God is still on the throne. Praise God Almighty. Amen. That's what I'm saying, right? Because because if we can make if we can make the gospel relative, if we can make it, if we can make it so that you can see it in the midst of the paganism that surrounds it, we can bring the majesty back to what we call Christmas, the day that like we recognize that. Like that. the, the, the like coming that. of God in the flesh. The word became flesh. And it's the word that God used Christ himself, right? The pre-incarnate Christ to create everything. Because in the beginning, when you look at Genesis 1 and 1, God, God said, boom, and everything was. So I, I really don't have a problem with the Big Bang Theory, right? Because I don't have a problem with that. People said, hey, I said not a problem. Because God said, and bang, there it was. Everything came in the being. I ain't That's got no right. problems with the Big Bang Theory because God That's created right. the bang and the big. And so right. I, I'm good with that. Because the word of God is powerful. It creates everything. And the word of God became flesh. On this day, on when I say this day, of course, I'm, I'm thinking about yesterday. But on the day that he that we celebrate his arrival on this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That's and right. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it forever. Because if it wasn't for this day, I wouldn't be, you wouldn't be, we wouldn't be, we couldn't be, we will not be tomorrow. Yesterday would have been past and gone. Today would have been non-existent and tomorrow couldn't even arrive. Amen. Amen. You know what comes to mind to my brother is several things. Um, I I'm going to uh, share with you uh, uh, what came to my mind while you were speaking, you said, uh, what is needed? What, what are some of the things we need to do to bring back uh, the majesty uh, of the day and of the celebration? Uh, um, well, 
it depends on who we're speaking to. If we're if you're speaking to the church, that's one thing. If you're speaking to the world, that's another. Um, but I would think that when it comes to um, bringing back the majesty, you're right. The Bible says several things. It says, my people perish because mm. they don't know, lack of understanding. Uh, um, then he also says, um, you know, in order to serve God, you know, first and foremost, in our churches, as it relates to in the last days, if we look at the eschatological books, um, if we look at the end times revelations and prophecies, uh, the God's calendar is right on point. And the last days, when did they begin? They begin uh, uh, when, uh, with Christ. And so mm -hmm. you got to look at, there's a lot of time that has elapsed since then. Uh, but it is um, what comes to mind. The Bible says in Tim the book of Timothy, it says, study to show yourselves approved uh, that you um, might, you know, be workmen who can rightly divide the word of mm -hmm. truth. And it's like a person, my brother, who if we're speaking relevance or practicality, I like the word practicality because mm -hmm. there's so much theology in what we do and say as preachers and teachers that uh, actually we don't really bring it back down to reality where people, like you said, could understand. And Jesus says, I speak plain that people understand. You want to know uh, heavenly things and high things, but you can't even uh, or not willing to believe me about just earthly things, the simple things that I'm saying. And so um, he said, I speak and plainly that even the simple can understand. And I believe that like a deaf person, uh, they said there's something wrong with their tongue. Uh, uh, no, there's nothing wrong with their tongue. There's something wrong uh, uh, with their ears. They can't hear because if they're not hearing it right, they can't speak it right. And if you can't hear it right and speak it right, you can't perceive it right. And so that has a lot to do with in the last days, not only did it say uh, God's people uh, are not going to be willing to endure sound doctrine, but he says also he gives a warning in the, in the eschatological books. He says, woe and beware. Woe to the false teachers and beware of false prophets, false teachers. And so if we're not sharing the word of God in the manner in which it is given with, 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 a, with a profession of, of passion and spiritual fullness, then the people um, remain the same. You, you, we have so many people who are saved, but they show no spiritual growth. We have so many people who are saved and says, yes, I know the Lord. But if you ask them, what do they believe? You, even in our church, might surprise you what the majority of the people say. And, and I say that there is a heavy price on the preaching and teaching because we've, as pastors, many of us have become compromisers. Many of us have become uh, a part of, uh, uh, of looking up to me. And if, and, and if I can just break you off something, uh, um, and keep you looking at me, uh, can you really see God? Mm. And so we have to be very careful uh, because if we teach the word and preach the word relevantly as it is written and get past our denominational differences. Oh, the de call, denominational I, I call, limitations. Yeah, I, I call it. apartheid. Yeah, yeah I, I call it demonization because actually the Bible didn't tell me I had to preach a certain way because I was back. Didn't, doesn't say anything about being a Protestant or Methodist or Lutheran, but, but God says, my word is my word. And if we just preach and teach the word, my brother, as you well know, as it is written and be willing to live that life and be willing to rebuke and to correct and to, and to preach and teach sound doctrine, then the people will be convicted. See, when God convicts the people or convicts us, it comes through the word of God because it said the word is profitable for rebuke, for doctrine, you know, for instruction and in righteousness, you know, uh, but there's not too much of that at all going on. And it's just a bunch of us just going to church, hearing a good sermon, uh, the churches, you know, let, let me just sidebar for one no, second. No, no, before you do that, I want you to hold that point because we're at the top of the hour. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to, I'm going to give my, I'm going to give preference to my advertisers and sponsors, I want to read the article again, 
And then I want to ask the question. I'm going to start bringing in, in the second half of, our, of, of the broadcast, I want to bring in some more thoughts and comments that our readers are reading so that they can become a part of our dialogue. Yeah, but absolutely. hold your point. Don't lose your point because I'm going to come right back to that as soon as we come back from this break. So I'm going to I'm going to ghost for a minute so I can bring up all of these things that I need to do. And then we'll come back. So give me a minute. I'm just going to disappear for a moment and then we'll come back. So they, they have it on the screen. So here we go, guys. Are the trustees in your house of worship knowledgeable of all of their fiduciary responsibilities? Are the disciples of your house of worship aware of the Lord's biblical economic strategies? Are you planning to renovate, build, refinance, or develop your church property? Well, the JLR company, J. Lauren R. Consulting LLC, is here to help you. Give us a call at 718-328-8096. That's 718-328-8096. Or visit our website www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com That's www.jlaurenrusselconsulting.com At the JLR Company, J. Lauren R. Consulting, LLC, it's not about the castle, it's about the kingdom. Get your copy of Matters of Faith, the book. You can use the cash app, dollar sign, Matters of Faith. The book is $22.80, which covers shipping and handling. Or you can send a check or money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. You can also get the book as an ebook. Just go to www.smashwords.com backslash books, backslash view, backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books, backslash view, backslash 993177. There is a 50% discount if you act now. Check out the Eat Oprah app for Black-owned restaurants all over the nation. Yes, get the Eat Oprah app. Now please, subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, and, and share the Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Please, ma'am, please, sir, more than ever, we need to make sure that we are vaccinated. Anyone five years of age and above are eligible, and even those under five can be vaccinated, and the vaccines are free. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for someone that you love. You know I love you, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it, so get used to it. Oh, and get vaccinated. And now the article, The Day the Lord Has Made. And you can find that article in my column at both the Bronx Chronicle as well as the Yonkers Insider online newspaper. The Bronx Chronicle, www.thebronxchronicle.com. That's www.thebronxchronicle.com. Scroll down until you find my column, Matters of Faith. You will find the article, The Day the Lord Has Made. Or you can go to the Yonkers Insider online newspaper. Go to yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. That's www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. Type in Matters of Faith in the search bar and you will find the article, Matters of Faith. And the article is entitled, The Day the Lord Has Made. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 from the New King James Version. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The day the Lord has made. The prophetic word of the prophet Isaiah sets the stage for the introduction of the Savior of the world. The Jews began the process of looking for the coming of the Savior. Unfortunately, they rejected his arrival because they expected a conquering warrior, not a babe in a manger. But that didn't stop the prophecy from becoming a reality. A child was born who was indeed wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. We now celebrate this day that the Lord has made. Every biblical prophecy of the coming of the Savior was fulfilled on this day. Theologians cannot definitively determine the exact day or date of the Messiah's birth. But history proves, as Luke wrote, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, 
who is Christ the Lord, Luke 2 and 11. Today is Christmas, the day that was prophesied to come from the beginning of time. This is the day that has been designated to celebrate Jesus Christ coming into the world, the day that was prophetically announced and divinely determined. It marked the beginning of something new in the pages of history. It's new, yet it is as old as the Bible itself. The Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled on this day. Genesis 3, 14 and 15 says the Messiah will be the offspring of the woman who shall bruise the serpent's head. Genesis 17, 7 says the Messiah would be born of the seed of Abraham. And Genesis 49, 8 through 10 says the Messiah would be from the tribe of Judah. There are more than 100 prophecies that were fulfilled on this day. In Malachi 4, verses 2 and 3, the Messiah was declared to be the son of righteousness, the day spring, our light. Jesus Christ declared himself to be the light of the world. He says all who follow him will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Christ means Messiah, the anointed. Don't take my word for it. Investigate it for yourself. If you find any reason to doubt that this is the day the Lord has made, then live your life your way. But if you find that this is the day the Lord has made, I invite you to examine the symbol of the evergreen tree, the Christmas tree. Its top points to heaven and its needles remain green year round. The evergreen tree is a symbol of God's gift of eternal life and a reminder of the living presence of Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Psalms 118.24 declares, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Be blessed. And now the question. What can be done to restore the majesty of this day that the Lord has made? Let me ask it again. What can be done to restore the majesty of this day that the Lord has made? Amen. 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 I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to jump right. I want to I want to share with you a comment that was made and I'm going to jump right to you, uh, bro, bro, Brother Bernard. I want you to uh, sort of pick up right where you left off. But Darnell said something. He, he said, yep, depends on who you're speaking with. God's people will grow as the wheat that grows along with the tares. As the world, the tares moves forward away from God or further away from God in practice. So the people of God, the weak, will move closer to God. His majesty will always be praised by his people. So I'm going to jump right back to you because you said, I want to, I want to, I want to pivot. And I'm going to let you pivot. Go, go ahead and pivot. Go ahead and pivot to that and jump on that one right quick. Well, um, what I like about what you just said and how we uh, concluded before um, our our a brief interlude, um, I do believe that, again, it depends on, as we stated earlier, um, who you're speaking to. If we're speaking to the church directly or if we're speaking to the world. We already understand, and the Lord has, and God's been clear about the world's view because it's at enmity with God. We know that. Uh, enmity uh, with God means enemy of God. So we know that the world is going to do what the world does. It, we should not find it odd, nor should it catch us off guard what the world does. But the Lord says, uh, you are not of the world, you know, because we are, we are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. And he said, let go of all things that so easily beset you. Uh, focus and keep your mind on whatsoever things in, in Philippians the book of Philippians, where so things are pure, noble, holy. Um, uh, but when it comes to the church, let me share it this way. Um, like you, you mentioned, our brother made a comment. Listen, the, the parable of the mustard seed reminds me of the church because the mustard seed is such a small, it's the smallest of seeds, uh, like an infant among seeds. And, uh, but yet that, that, that mustard seed, if planted, um, um, if somebody would just be willing to plant that little infant tile type of seed, which most probably wouldn't even plant, uh, it, it may start small and may and it may uh, appear to be small and with its humble beginnings, but then it it continually grows so much so that it becomes the biggest tree in the garden. 
um, um, because of its growth. And that's what reminds me of, of, the, baby, of the baby Christ. Um, he came in uh, humble and helpless. Amen. Uh, this small package, this, this, this real tight, this, this infantile thing. Uh, but look at what has transpired as it relates to uh, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end uh, because it's going to continue to grow, continue to uh, bloom far beyond uh, human imagination and understanding uh, because of the one who planted it. Um, and so uh, for me, the church, it, 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 has, it has to come from as uh, another example is when God shared with Peter. Uh, he said, Peter, do you love me? Uh, and Peter, Peter responded incorrectly. Uh, uh, God says, do you agape me? And Peter says, mm -hmm. Peter says, yes, Lord, I phileo you. And, right. and then God didn't reprimand him. He, 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 he sensed that he may not fully understood. So he just spoke, began to speak to him plainly again. He says, man, look, if you love me, he said, feed my sheep. That is critical. What are we and what's interesting? You know, you, you mentioned, and I'll do I'll do this too, right? He said, he said, do you agape me? And Peter's response was, Lord, you know that I phileo you, yeah, to be that's brotherly it. love. And then and Jesus said, but then feed my sheep. Then he asked him again, and Peter responded, Well, you know, I I I, I eros you, I, I I love you like romantically, like somebody fell fall in love with somebody. He said, Well, feed my sheep. Then he asked him a third time, Do you agape me? And that's when he fell apart because he didn't <laughs> quite understand he did, what no. agape love was. That's agape right. Agape is creative, redemptive goodwill for all men. And Peter yes. would learn that lesson going forward because he would even learn that what, G, what, what God, what, what he said to him, what I say is clean, is clean. Don't tell me what's clean. What I say is clean, is clean. Take and eat what I give you. That's right. So he had to learn a tough lesson for himself because he was he was completely Jewified. Mm -hmm. He was following protocol and, and everything else. But the Lord says, but I want you to agape. I want you to love beyond your capacity to love. That's right. So thank you for sharing that. I just wanted to elucidate on that because that's one of my that's one of my favorite passages. Favorite lovers. So go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I want you to continue. No, I'm eating it, us it, now. I, I'm, it, eating. It, I'm eating. It, it's it's it, it's fine. Um, uh, I, I I look at several things that um, come to mind, and one of them that that really stands out for me is what are we what are we effectively, mm. relevantly, and uh, truthfully um, leading and guiding um, the people of God, and with the direction of the spirit of God, because remember, Christ says, if any man uh, come after me, let him first deny himself, mm -hmm. pick up his cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel as preachers, it's not follow the preacher, the pastor, um, but as the pastor who is sent to God's people for the intent and purpose to lead, guide the people of God, feed them in all spiritualness and manner, and to be the uh, epitome of example uh, to the flock. Uh, because the flock, you know, we know like sheep. My late pastor said it like this, um, Bishop Dr. Kel Moore C. Porter Jr. Uh, he shared with us, he says, let me share with you. He said, God called me to pastor, to shepherd. You all are, are sheep. And he said, the sheep, uh, can't move and go in the direction they need to unless they have a shepherd. He said, you never seen a talking sheep. He said, all they say is bat, bat, bat. He said, you, a sheep can't swim because they're too heavy. He says, mm -hmm. sheep can't see because- Oh, they get wet, they, they, they get wet, they sink. Yeah, yeah, he says, and if you, he said, and if you walk off a cliff, they're gonna still follow behind you. Yep. Yep. And so what I'm saying is, again, when the sheep have no direction, and when the sheep are not led in the manner of shepherdhood, what happens? They go astray. They drift off. And what happens? You look at the church today. They're, they're, we're in the church, uh, but many of us not of the church. 
um, um, the, God said, many of us say, Lord, Lord, but he said, are not his. And, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. Like I said, again, it's amazing because you have to look at what we're teaching. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say it, it has to begin in grassroots. Of course, you give people challenges. We have to uh, serve God in our own personal way, uh, but in relationship, but as uh, pastors, as shepherd leaders, as teachers, um, God has given us clear instruction. And as I said, if we just take a look at what direction we're giving the people of God, it has to begin there. Uh, because if the people ain't hearing it right, they can't do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they're not doing it right, the word of God is for correction and rebuke. Mm -hmm. But yet we find in our churches, we find people spending more time uh, decorating the church during Christmas. Mm -hmm. Then listen, listen, here's what I see. If you want to gauge the strength of a church and, and, and the effectiveness of the ministry, it's not all about the pastor. It's not really about his preaching. It's not. Mm -hmm. The strength of a, of a true church that will, is effective and to make a difference, like you said, to make a difference and bring back what's needed during this time of celebration is Wednesday and Tuesday nights when you have Bible study. You have churches on those nights, you find very few people in Bible study. If you're not studying, if they're not hearing the word, but just good messages, what are we feeding? You know, even with us, junk food is not good for the body. There are a lot of, there's mm -hmm. a lot of food that we eat and are fed. Taste but it's good, not good, but it, right. Taste Tastes good, though. good, yeah, look good, smell but, but good. Any, exactly, but that ain't anything it, for you. No it, nutrition, it, no it, nutrition. It backs no up. Nutrition so we need, yeah, so we need a daily and fortified and complete diet of the word of God because the word of God says in the book of Timothy what the word of God is for. And so we have no excuse. We're left without excuse because God has given us the word as our map, as our traveler's guide. Uh, and, and so when you think about Bible study, prayer service, these things are, are, to me, the true gauges of the strength of a church and its people. So again, um, ministry is not just coming to church on Sunday. Uh, we all have to commit. And you know, commitment's been a big thing uh, mm -hmm, in the church. Mm -hmm. But one thing sticks out to me, brother, let me just say this. Uh, the Bible says, um, Christ said himself, no weapon formed against my church shall prosper. So the Lord knew that these things would happen. They knew that these challenges would come, but he has already equipped us for the challenge. He says uh, in Ephesians chapter six, he talks about the full armor. He didn't say nothing about chink. People tell me, well, I got a chink in my arm. You ain't got no chink in your arm. Chink in your arm is because you don't trust God. What God has given us to put on is more than enough. It's not just enough to fight. It's more than enough to be a conqueror. Uh, and that means um, not just one battle, one fight, over and over and over and over. Study to show yourself approved that you can rightly divide when things are going south instead of going north. He says, focus your mind and put your give, my, give your heart to me. He says, and I will bless you. So when we think about what the word of God says in reference to bringing back the trueness and meaning of this type of season, which to me, it is, there is no other season uh, um, than, than the birth of Christ because there wouldn't have been a passion. There wouldn't have been a, a crucifixion. There wouldn't have been a, a burial, death, or resurrection. Uh, the birth of God's only begotten son coming into the world is so profound to us that 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 how can we look at it so casual to whereas when we mm. get done you know we just go right back to you know celebrating like the world does um so there are so many factors but i believe it starts with the word of god with the teaching um and how we're being led and the vision and the direction we're, we're given by our shepherd leaders because the lord says hey i send them to you to lead and guide them in the pathway in which I desire for them to go. And so mm -hmm. we have to we have to take a real good look at what we're preaching, what we're teaching. It's not about keeping members. It's not about how much money we have. It, it's not about uh, we have the best sounding preacher 
on the East Coast. No, it's about like with Christ. Christ was willing to empty himself, to give his all to us, that we might have this privilege. But you ask yourself the question, are you giving a Cain a, a offering or an Abel offering? What are you offering up? Are you offering up the sacrifice of praise to the Lord? What are we offering him? What are we bringing to the table? Because he brought everything to us. And he, was, he wasn't willing to spare no expense. So much so that nothing could appease him but him doing it himself. And look at this holy and sovereign and righteous God who, who stepped down a, 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 a notch to become everything to us that we might have all things that he always desired for us. And especially in, an, in, in, in a personal relationship, just like God, I, there's no expense that was willing to, to look at and to, to consider for yourself. Well, let me give you something to think about. Let me give you something to think about. Darnell says, I dress okay. And on my neck, I wear a cross. No one ever comments on the cross I wear. My wife is handling several disabilities and I help her. It is called for more from us than either of us ever thought we would have to give. But we trust God in all things. People watch us and comment on how we handle things. See, it's not how we wear our cross. That's right. It's how That's right. we bear our cross. That's, That's right. That's right, my brother. Well, like the Bible says, to, to whom much is given, much is required. And I say this also, as our brother made comment, what I like, you know, I, I heard a saying, um, and it stuck with me um, from the time I heard it. Um, you know, everything that God has pur purposed for us in this life um, is in our cross. And he, like you said, he desires for us to carry it to bear it, you know, um, and, and it's amazing to me of, of like you said, it, it's, it, it's about the example you set because people are watching. In fact, the only God that people may see uh, um, realistically uh, is in you and I, and for those of us who are in the body of Christ, because we are his representatives. We are representatives of, of the king of glory. And so uh, being representatives, uh, um, you know, I oftentimes say, Lord, you know, all that I've gone through in my life too much is given, much is required because as much as I've been through in this short period of time, I've been on this earth. I said to myself, wow, Lord, it, it, you must have something special that you really want me to do to bring me through all of this stuff. I never thought even in my own self, I would have made it this far in reference to all the things that I've been through. And I'm realizing now mm -hmm. I've been through all of this because uh, by by trusting God, uh, um, uh, there are so many people who are watching, people who we'll never know, people once we get to glory, we never met will say, you know what, I saw you, I watched you, and it's because of you that I drew closer to God, because I knew God was real, because I watched him work in your life, I saw what you went through, and people, oftentimes we don't realize who's watching, folks are watching, and in fact, even tonight on your show, there are people scrolling, People are trying to get there. Everybody may not want to see it for the right intent and purpose, but they're curious. You know, they're hungry and they're looking for that thing in life. Never be able to find it, uh, uh, but they'll be able to see it. And God wants uh, wants them to see it in us. He uses well, you know, you like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, no, I was going to say, you, you, you know, you mentioned the mustard seed and, and I have a bunch of mustard seeds here, little bitty things, um, <laughs> little bitty things. I mean, it's small, real small, but, you know, it's interesting because the Lord does not require, does not ask us to grow the trees. He asks us to plant the seeds. That's right. Plant the seeds. If you plant the seeds, I'll do the growing. So, you know, um, Paul said it best. He says, I plant Apollo's waters, but God gives the increase. increase. That's right. And so if we, if we do that, if, if we are faithful to the thing that he asks us to do, then we'll be able to show the, the, the handiwork of God and deliver, literally help deliver people out of their sin and into their salvation. Uh, Georges, my, my, one of my viewers, Georges, Georges Jarvis, he's been a guest on my show as, as Daryl has on several occasions, but Georges also is my, is my, is my robe maker. He makes my robes for me. 
So you need to get to know him. He's a phenomenally gifted young man. He says, when we as a unified people can realize that peace is of the utmost importance, to know peace that Jesus says in Thessalonians, the peace that surpasses all understanding, this comes about through a divine consciousness, knowing the power that is just and is for all of us and is all about us. Staying connected to his presence is all about us. He's just, love is God, God is love. Mm -hmm. So so he kind of gets me to thinking that when we when we're connected, and, and especially during this time of the year when we are, you know, focused on the advent of Christ, the, the coming, that, that if we recognize and begin to 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 seek the peace of God, because he brings peace to our souls if we allow it to be so. Um that when we focus on and begin to give credit to the God of, our, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, recognizing that all of the prophets said that this day would come, and we recognize that this day is here, we get a peace that surpasses all of our understanding. Amen. For me, that's amazing. For me, that's amazing. Because, you know, you talked about what you have been through in your life. And I think every one of us has a story. You know, like they, like we always like to say, you know, you see the glory, but you don't know my story. And every single one of us has a story behind who we are. And if you look back over the years of your life, if you look back where you have been brought from, you know, it's only by the grace of God that you're here today. Only. It's only by the grace of God that I'm here today. Because truth is, truthfully speaking, I probably should have been dead a long time ago. Some of it because of the things that I've done and some of it because of the places that I've been. But I sh should not have been here today. But by the grace of God, I'm here. Why? Because he has a purpose for life, for my life. That's Whether right. I like it or not, but I like the purpose that he's called me to. I didn't always like it. Like you said in the very beginning, in the opening minutes of the, uh, of, of the broadcast, I didn't always like the fact that he called me for this particular purpose. I wanted to do other things. But when I gave up those other things, I gave the Satan back all of his tools as well. That's right. That's right. And you take these back. I'm not going to be using them. I'm not going to be needing <laughs> them anymore. I like that. I like that. I like that. Well, I like well that's that. not unique to me. Actually, I got I got to confess. I heard that I was down south. Of my, my, my sister had a, a, a near fatal accident about 20 years ago. And I was down south at in, in South Carolina in the Greenville area, which is where my family's from. I was at um, uh, 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 um, uh, the Memorial Hospital there in Greenville, and uh, we were praying, and we were in the waiting room, and there was an old elderly lady sitting there, and we began to talk about the goodness of the Lord, and she said, when I gave my life to the Lord, I gave Satan back all his tools. Mm. I never forgot it. I remember it fondly forever, and every day I'm trying to give back one of the tools that he put in my bag. Because I don't want them no more. No, oh, I don't goodness. need them no more. I got I got Jesus on my side, and that's enough. That's right. That's right. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm just dry, jotting those things down. Those are, I call them uh, helpful nuggets. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right Wisdom. down. That's what I do. That's right. So, oh, by the way, here's another one. Here, here's another one. Dial stop. Dial drop this right. Yep. Okay. If we can even just receive the seed as good ground, then we give God the opportunity to manifest himself through us as the fruit that we will bear. Mm. So literally, in planting the seed, we also become the fruit of that seed planting. That's right. That, that, that you know, you can't, and I like the way the Bible says it, right? You can't, well, no, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say it, but the, the the writer, a songwriter said, you can't beat God given. That's right. No matter, no matter how, how you try. try. But right. the Bible does say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Because with the same measure that you use to give, the same measuring tool is going to be used to get back to you. That's so right. God does the reciprocity of giving, the reciprocity of love. When you love, you will be loved. When you give, you shall receive. You can't, and, and it doesn't matter that you don't want to receive it. In fact, 
let me say this and I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue because but this one I, I love because I, I've shared this on many occasions. I do, you know, I do church finance and I do a lot of teaching on on on, on finances as as it relates to the Bible, biblical finance, biblical economics, as I call it. But if you give and someone seeks to give you something in return, it's your responsibility to receive it. Because if you refuse that gift, you break the cycle. God creates cycles. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. So you give and then a person wants to bless you in return. If you don't receive it, you bless, you break the cycle that the Lord may have placed it on their heart to do something for you. Now, um, let's assume that they can't give you anything and that's fine. But then you go someplace else and someone else wants to bless you and you say oh no no that's fine no no that's okay i did that because i wanted to well that's the same reason that they were doing it to you because the lord placed it on their heart they wanted to but when you don't receive it you break the giving cycle you break that that gift that god has given given and shall be given unto you when you break that cycle the blessing that the person who was giving to you it they don't get it from you or they don't get it from that source and you don't get the blessing that the lord planned for you because you did not receive that gift that God placed on their heart to give to you. Please remember that. Don't And all of you listening, don't forget that because sometimes Christians become the worst receivers that I know. Mm -hmm. The worst. Um, people try, no, 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 it's okay. No, no. And they, they, they turn, they're, they're turning blessings away. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Learn to say thank you. Now, once you say thank you and you receive it, it's yours. You can do with it whatever you want because you own it. But if you don't receive it, it ain't yours. You can't give away what you ain't got. So please, please learn to say thank you. God is trying to bless you. Learn to say thank you to God. And then when you receive it, now you can do with it whatever God places on your heart because you own it. It's in your possession. I've seen that so many times. I mean, blessing just just blow by people because they don't know how to say thank you. So say thank you. And I, I'm not a I'm not a, a call and response type preacher, but I'll do it tonight. Somebody <laughs> say thank you. <laughs> in fact, in fact, Dow kind of backed me up on this one. John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. Thank you, Daryl. So let me get back to you. Let me get back to you. The question that I placed on the table tonight, the question that we were asking, the question that I placed for everyone, and I really want you guys to answer this question because it's really important that you engage this conversation. I'm talking to my listeners. I'm talking to the viewers now. What can be done to re restore the majesty of this day that the Lord has made? And of course, I'm thinking about the day of Christmas, but, but literally, uh, 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 Reverend Bernard has said it best. Every day is a day that the Lord has made. So what can we do to restore the majesty of the day that the Lord has made? I throw that one to you. I throw that you, Reverend Bernard. You can answer. You can jump on that. You, you, you like you like stomping around on stuff. Stomp on that for a while. <laughs> That's a good one. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So the um, question, I, I'm throwing it back at you. Okay. Um. Again, for me, um, what comes to mind? for me is to first and foremost, realize who is in control and in charge of the day. As you said, this is the day. God is the author and finisher mm -hmm. of every day. Every day, God grants us new mercies. The new mercies that he grants us is enough, no matter what goes on in our life during that day. The new mercies are more than enough to sustain and maintain us no matter what we would experience in that day. And to recognize that God who is the creator of the day thought that much of us 
to include us in the day. He didn't have to include us in the day that he has made, whether it's today, tomorrow, or yesterday. And so we, uh, as a part of uh, being reverent and thankful to God for just finding favor in us, just one more day is enough. And the reminder of every day is to know that God is the author of the day. God has the first and last say of the day. God has sourced us mm. into a day and sees us out of that day. And so our, the only response that a re, true redeemed soul of, of, of the Lord can say is, Lord, thank you for the day. And then God shows you and reveals to us everything that goes on and is connective to that day. Uh, and so he says what? Rejoice. And because he's not asking us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said it should be an act of human humility and holy thank and holy thankfulness and 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 reverence to the one who was allowed it. Because again, when we got up this morning, we was on God's wake up list. Uh, it wasn't because we were that good that we were supposed to see another day. Another day is not promised. Each day is uniquely special mm-hmm. in itself. Right. And God has an intent and purpose for each day that He allows us to live in this life one day at a time. So for me, if we can just take it one day at a time and to reflect that no matter what the day brings, God is God and he's still in control and that everything we are and and can be holy and true comes from him and through him. And without him, not only was nothing made, but nothing can be done. Mm. But because of him, because of one, one man's righteousness, because of one who came into the world because uh, um, he didn't have to. I, I call it God's uh, uh, emancipation proclamation because it is through a, a holy decree that God, the righteous judge, uh, looked past our faults and saw the humanistic need. And and every day is a reminder of that, not yes. just only uh, uh, just because Christ was to come into the world. Every day is a reminder of how awesome and great. That's why the author Isaiah says, uh, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Counsel, you know, the, uh, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, you know, the everlasting, the everlasting Father of whose kingdom there shall be no end. When you think about those declarations, they're under, they're under, the, un, under, under the title of uh, uh, of explaining and talking about his deity, of this child's deity, of, of this child's holiness and divinity. Uh, I call it theos, theosentrophic, you know, God, man. Uh, that's what's so uh, amazing about it, that God was fully God, never ceased to be God, yet was fully man. And so let's look at uh, the wholeness and each day God is preparing us. He's reminding us each and every day uh, that it is me. Hey, it's me mm. who's doing this. And this is what I desire for you. Another day that I can, another day that I made, and I want you to rejoice and get the fullness, the abundance of it, because your life has never been the same. You know that. Look at where I brought you from. Look at how I take care of you. Look at how I, uh, I provide for you. Look mm. at how I protect you. Look at how many, so many have, have, have left this earth all year long and how the death angel was all around you, came down your street, went to the house before yours, passed yours by, went to the house next to yours. But yet, you know, you're still here. And and because I still have a a work for you to do. I'm reminded, I look at Romans chapter eight, one of my favorite chapters, when it talks about now for those who are in Christ, therefore there's no condemnation. Uh, But but, but he could even come to that point if he had not come into the world. And because he came into the world and chose us, ordained us, foreknew us, predestined us, called us, justified us. Why did he do all this for me, for you? So that we would be conformed into the image of his son and whom he is well pleased. And so it's amazing that in Christ, we start off as infants in Christ. Humble beginnings with a soul dependence on a heavenly father. And, and so with through that dependence, uh, a father parents us He nurtures us. He revised our life. He renewed our life. He gave us a fresh start, a new perspective, and a new beginning uh, that that we could 
uh, be a part of all that he had designed for us to be in spite mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm, direction mm -hmm. we were in, in spite of what we became. And so none of that could have come into fruition because see, God doesn't live in time. Uh, time was made for man. Uh, so that the, the purpose and fulfillment of God's plan for humanity uh, would come to pass. And so it's amazing because if you look at from Christ from the time he was born to the time he was on the cross and said it is finished, <laughs> that right there is just, for me, it's amazing uh, 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 that it's finished. He went from victory coming into the world to vindication, which was reconciliation on the cross. God worked it out. Mm -hmm. And his word would not come back to him empty. See, if we look at from the time he was born, he lived 33 years. Look at all that uh, time prior to Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ that was with, the, with God in the beginning. Like you said, I like when you said that. Uh, uh, um, and, and, and yet all of the prophecy, all of the hundreds of years that was spoken of the one to come, Messiah, come into the world to save God's people. Some people say everyone. Ah, ah, I got a little challenge. It said God's people. So God's speaking to a client people and for those who will believe through them. So there's a lot riding on who we are as well because yeah, he wants us to be his very own uh, hope chess in the world. He want, He desires for us to be who he is in the world, who he is in the world. He wants us to be um that perfect example that was pleasing the sight of the father. When he looked at Christ, when he's baptized it. Now that's my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. So what right. is he well, going to Let me say this. Let me say this. Because he doesn't want us to be perfect because we can't be perfect. When we get perfect, we, we got to leave here because there are no perfect that's right. humans. That's right. So, but but there was something else you said that I, that I, really, that I really wanted to talk on. You talked about um, the, the fact that the time that we spend, the time that we have, um, that God stands outside of time, but he's given us time in which to come to a relationship with him. And I mentioned it earlier that we have 168 hours a week that we have in our lives, right? Every week, 168 hours, uh, every day. Now listen to this, this is amazing. 86,400 seconds every day. 24 hours is 86,400 seconds that are given to us every day. And all it takes is for you to commit some of that time to the Lord so that you can develop that relationship. So here's the numbers in reality, right? 604,800 seconds a week, every single week, every single week. 31,536,000 seconds a year, every year that God gives to us. So in God's sight, we're already multimillionaires. If we happen to live to be 60 or 70 years old, we're multi-billionaires. Right. And the question becomes, how do we spend that time and how, how much of it do we give back to the Lord? Now, if we do it the way the Bible instructs us to do it, that we ought to give 10% of what we have back to the Lord as a tithe, then we ought to give back 10% of our time to the Lord as well. So if we're only giving an hour or two a week because we come to worship service and we hear a sermon preached and we're only spending that hour, hour and a half out of the 168 hours, then we are shortchanging the Lord by a large margin. So a 10th of 168, one tenth is 16.8 hours a week, right? That's 10. That's right. Do we get anywhere close to doing that? And so it becomes, it becomes, what are we giving? Are we giving him our best? And that, that really becomes the question. So Jurgis says something. Jurgis says, when we quote scripture, even in prayer, which is a prayer in itself, I remember mentally saying, give and I, it's a saying, give and I shall be given to you or give and I shall give to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall I give into your bosom or me give into my bosom, to your bosom. What he's really saying is that that scripture that we quoted, he says, behind that, I say to God, Father, I am a giver. Let me give into my bosom. This always brings a quick favor response. Someone does for me. So when I give, in other words, 
Jurgis is asking to be a giver so that the Lord can give back to him so that he can give even more. I think that's a wonderful thing because then that's time spent with the Lord in service to the people. We got to be able to do this. Um, it is an amazing thing when we are being able to give and to share and how to measure what we're giving to the Lord, how much time we're spending with the Lord. Uh, I, I look forward to Matters of Faith every Monday night because it gives me an opportunity to spend at least two hours additionally spending time with the Lord, talking about his goodness, his mercies, his grace. Now, in addition to that, there's prep time because I got to get prepared for this, right? That's right. The article that is written, the sermon that is preached, the conversation that is had, all of these things require prep time. So what it does is it puts me in the company of the Lord. I need to be in the company of the Lord a lot because I got Amen. a lot of stuff running through my head. Amen. And if I stop being in the presence of the Lord, those things will run amok in my mind. And if they run amok in my mind, they may come out of my hands. If they come out of my hands, they may come out of my feet. And I'll be in places I shouldn't be doing things I shouldn't do, saying things I had no business saying and thinking thoughts that that really need to be out of my head. But but that's why I have to. I have to. I don't know about y'all, but I have to spend that time with the Lord because I know how much I'm up against. I know the enemy's desire to sift my soul like wheat. That's right. I'm no better than Peter. I'm no better than Paul. I'm no better than any of these others. You know, I, I've got I've got to put myself in a position to be blessed. I've got to do that because because Satan is, is just looking for my weakest link, my weakest link. And so the way in which for me, I'm going to answer my question, the way that I, in my estimation, the way I see that we can or what can be done to restore the majesty of this day, the day that the Lord has made is by surrendering and giving myself wholly to the Lord so that he can use me anywhere and at any time. And when I find myself out of source, and I do that from time to time, is to know that I can, I can always turn to the, to the comfort of the word of God. I can read the Bible. I can read something. I can talk to a saint who can encourage me when I'm losing my own sense of strength. That's how we bring the majesty back to the day that the Lord has made for me. Might be different for you, but that's what it is for me. Now, I'm going to do this, Doc, because we're, we're almost out of time. It's like 9.50. we got about 10 more minutes. So I want to give you an opportunity to share any way you want. Just, just continue to bless us. Drop those seeds and pearls and, and gems of, 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 of blessings to us. And then I'm going to take the last five minutes or so to close out. The Lord has placed something on my heart that I need to share with you and recognize those who support me in this ministry. So doc, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You go ahead and do your thing and thank you again, just for being Amen. here. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, and there were, there were two things that I'd like to just briefly say, because you've said it all. Um, um, you've blessed me in what you've had to share because sometimes we uh, put ourselves in the think mode uh, and, and, and there, there's a way that seems right to a man. Uh, but his end is not right. Uh, that's scriptural as well. And so the Lord says over in Proverbs, which is a wise saying from a father to his children, he says to his son, he says, uh, trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so, and so I'm not trying to figure out what needs to be done because God has already worked it out. Uh, and like you said, sometimes we get so consumed with stuff and things. And like you said, the competition is real um, in our lives uh, uh, in reference to um, our spirit and our flesh is very competitive. And we know our flesh wants it one way and our spirit is showing us another. And if we don't stay on point and focus, you made a great point. Um, if, if I don't, I need to put myself in a position to be blessed. I need to surround myself around uh, and, and, and fill my, uh, myself uh, uh, with the word of God daily 
prayer daily, um, also in, in making myself more available to the Lord. Because like you said, we can sit down, watch a football game. We can sit down and, 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 and some of us still, you know, playing on those games or whatever it might be, mm -hmm, hours. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and stay there for hours and hours, but yet uh, we, we, we give very little time and we may have good intent of what we do, but good intent doesn't, doesn't cut it. Uh, the Lord says um, we have to deny ourselves, and that's our flesh. Deny, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you sacrificing? What are you willing to give up? Mm -hmm. I know the Lord, and, I, and, and my final point is this. I, I remember even after I played collegiately baseball in college, it was that I, I really enjoyed playing baseball. And it got mm. to the, our church, our church uh, deacon had left the church and we didn't have anyone teach Bible study. I was new in the church. And, uh, but yet I was in Bible study um, um, on a regular basis. I, I couldn't wait for Bible study and studying afterwards and preparing during the week. Um, and when he left, I couldn't figure out why we couldn't have Bible study until the pastor found somebody. So I asked him, I said, Pastor, I said, Get, can I try? He says, you know, you have to be committed. You have to be dedicated. You got to put the time in. I said, well, you're saying I'm not ready? He, I don't know. I said, Pastor, let me, give me a chance. <laughs> and so he gave me the chance. Now watch this. The point is what I'm saying. I didn't realize <laughs> that on Wednesdays uh, is when the team I was on played baseball. Mm. And I said, no, that's my passion. I always loved baseball. I mean, you know, and, and just to be there. And I, I, could, could we have Bible study on Thursday? And, and I didn't think about it at first, but it's Wednesday was the only day we played. So mm. I said, oh, I have to give up really something I enjoy doing. Something I'll go out there for two or three hours on a Wednesday, or if we're playing two games, three hours plus. Wow. Okay. And then afterwards, hanging out with the guys, not, not right, doing the thing right, they were right, doing, right, right. but you know, just in, in fellowship. And then yet, yeah, guess what? And then, oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm missing Bible study. So when I hmm. said to my pastor, I didn't realize it. And God was saying, ah, I'm going to put you to the test. What are you going to do? And I said, wow, I can't play no more. But guess hmm. what? By giving that up was when God started lifting me up hmm. even higher, giving me more responsibility, sharing with me too much is given where I brought you from. Uh, um, I'm requiring much of your life uh, because uh, um, your life now belongs to me. Yeah. And, and this is why I praise God, because if people don't know my story, then you can't understand my praise That's because right. of what That's God right. has done for me. How can I go to bed at night? How can I just walk around every day and say, well, Lord, I'll do a little this. I can wait till later to do that. And when I think about all he has done for me, the least mm. that we could do is worship him and serve him in a manner, not in a manner that pleases us. Right. But in a manner that it is due him. Mm. And so that's what I got from what you said. That is a big, that is a big thing. What am I giving? What am I offering up to God? Am I really serving God? Or if I'm just going through the motions? Am I really making a difference um, with all that God has given me? He's given me life again. He's given me a right mind to know that he is God. He has given me. Uh, um, um, things that that are that go so far beyond what I ever thought that he would do in my life. He's taken me places where I never thought I'd be. He called me into a calling that I definitely didn't want. I didn't ask for. I wasn't seeking or searching. Mm. And yet here I am saying, oh, well, you know, I'm tired. I really don't have mm. too much time. The Lord knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart. <laughs> and that's what God is looking at. Your heart. Where is your heart? Your mouth is with me. But your heart, yeah, yeah, it's right. away. So that's what giving more of myself to the service and glory of God to impact the life of others. That's a big part of what you had just said. What am I giving back? It's not about getting, receiving. Right, it's about right. it's about giving. God says, "I'll take care of you." He's open up the windows and pour you out blessing. You have room enough to receive. So right. again, I thank you so much, my brother, for this opportunity um, and an opportunity to stretch me as well, uh, because I've learned and been blessed tonight as well. Man, you are so welcome. You really, really are. And I appreciate your being here tonight. 
Uh, let, let me share this with you guys, right? In, 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 in the Sunday school lesson and commentary found in firstg.org, we read or we read, without the birth of Jesus, there is no life. Without the life of Jesus, there is no death. Without the death of Jesus, there is no resurrection. Without the resurrection of Jesus, we have no faith, no forgiveness, no eternal life, and no hope. It goes on to say, the historical life of God's only begotten son on earth, his birth, ministry, death, and resurrection is in fact essential to the gospel message that we proclaim. We have concluded the Advent season that began on the fourth Sunday before Christmas Day, the Sunday nearest November 30th, and ended on Saturday, Christmas Eve, December 24th. It was an anxious anticipation that we awaited the Advent, which in Latin means coming, the arrival of the Christ child who was named Jesus. Follow me on this. Advent not only celebrates the birth of Christ, but it also symbolizes the spiritual journey of individuals and congregations as we affirm that Christ has come, that he is present in the world today, and that he will come again in power. Christ means anointed, Messiah, and Jesus translates into Joshua. That means God saves. Luke writes in Acts 4 and 12, nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the salvation of the world. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one that was prophesied to come. Paul writes in the book of Philippians, therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You can find that in Philippians 2 verses 9 and 11 or 9 through 11. This is the day that the Lord has made. The entire history of the world culminated on this day. The world and all that dwelt in it had waited with bated breath for this day, it has been anticipated since the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eden. When I read John 20, verses 29 through 31, I had a better understanding of the magnitude that is this day that the Lord has made. Listen to this. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet have believed. This is where it gets good. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not in written book. in this book. But, but these are written that you may believe, you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the day that the, that Lord, the Lord has made. Has made. I thank God for my guest tonight, Reverend Bernard F. Johnson III, my brother. You have enriched this family of faith tonight by showing and then giving us a glimpse of the majesty that the Lord has brought into your life. You are a living example of how the Lord can use anyone who understands the significance of the day the Lord has made to leave a long trail of blessings in the lives of countless numbers of people because of your faith and your belief. Thank you for being with the Matters of Faith family tonight. I'm grateful that our mutual friend June recommended you as my guest. Now, it's my extreme pleasure. I want to extend to you, Reverend Bernard F. Johnson III, an invitation to come back and share with this family of faith again. We want to glean from your storehouse of wisdom and withdraw from your bank account of knowledge. Is that all right with you? Would you come yes, back? Sir. All yes, right, sir, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you back. I'm going to definitely Amen. get you back. Thank you. Now, don't forget our sponsors and advertisers, please. The JLR Company, J. Lauren R. Consulting, LLC, that's my company. For all your church financial needs, call 718-328-8096, 718-328-8096, or visit our website, www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com. That's www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com. It's not about the castle. It's about the kingdom. 
And Matters of Faith, the book, I've been talking about it all night. This is the physical book. You can get it through my cash app. Just send $23.40, which covers shipping and handling, uh, to the P.O. Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. Uh, I'll set, you don't have to send it to me. You can just do it by uh, your cash app. If you go to dollar sign matters of faith, you send $23.40. I will get you the book out immediately. And listen, it made a great Christmas gift. You missed that, but you can still give it away as a gift to somebody in the new year and bless their lives. Or you can also get it as an ebook. That information was on your screen. It's on your screen, actually. www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. If, <clears throat> if you use the coupon, you'll get a 50% discount through the end of the year. At the end of the year, it jumps back to, to the regular price. <clears throat> but right now, it's 50% off of the sale price of $20. So it costs $10 if you get it as an ebook. Triumph Physical Therapy for all your musculoskeletal needs call Triumph before you take that pill or schedule that surgery. They're in Harlem, 212-234-2900, 212-234-2900. Remember, I'm one of their clients. My Achilles is healed because of the therapy that they gave to me. Now make your contributions today to Love Thy Neighbor Incorporated. They're preparing for their new year giving and could use your financial support. Find them on their Facebook page, Love Thy Neighbor Inc., or Find their website, www.lovethyneighbor7.org. That's www.lovethyneighbor7.org. And please don't forget, subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Telephone, text, message, any way you do it, but tell a friend to join us next Monday night on Matters of Faith, the radio show. I can't tell you tonight who my guest will be or even what the topic will be, but I can tell you that you don't want to miss the show. Now, what's going to happen is this. When this show concludes, we will drop this episode of Matters of Faith on our Matters of Faith YouTube channel so that you can get it anytime, anywhere. It'll be on Matters, it'll be in our the Matters of Faith YouTube channel. And so subscribe, like, and share it so that you can share this with anyone, anywhere. You don't even have to have internet to get to the YouTube channel. Now, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. If no one has told you this today, let me be the first to say that I love you. There's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. So get used to it. God bless you. Good night. We'll see you all next week. Don't forget, telephone and tell a friend that Matters of Faith will be on again next 